Um, I'm curious about what could be the potential impact of human consciousness on a robot. Human consciousness on robots. Well, it's a difficult question, that, because, um, you know, the official view, uh, uh, well, obviously, human consciousness affects all our machines. We design them, we make them. They're, every single machine is a product of human consciousness, ultimately. But I think you're meaning something like, could there be a direct mind over matter effect? Well, there are already people putting brain implants where you can get, you know, from the electrical activity of the brain, you can influence robots or um, artificial arms and so on. But again, that's sort of all within the bounds of conventional science. It's an extraordinary application of it. But if we're talking about mind over matter effects, psychokinesis, um, then we're in an area where not much is understood or known. The natural history of psychokinesis includes a variety of weird phenomena, including poltergeists, where sort of heavy objects move around rooms and, and um, stones fall from, you know, get thrown mysteriously and so on. Those are often associated with mentally or emotionally disturbed adolescents. Um, and some people think that they're macroscopic uh, psychokinetic effects. Some people have a jinx on machines. Um, the, some physicists were, um, theoretical physicists were reputed to have such a strong jinx that they were uh, people trying to keep them out of their labs because if they went into the lab, sort of the apparatus broke down. Um, uh, on the other hand, some people seem to have uh, uh, just a, a, a bit like green fingers or green thumbs with plants. Some people just have a soothing effect on machines. I would, uh, if I was studying this, I'd actually start by doing a natural history of people's uh, reactions to machines, finding people who have a jinx and testing whether you can actually get this to happen under laboratory conditions. But basically, um, the, one of the more interesting experiments on a robot was done by a French scientist called René Payoc. And I discuss this in my book, Dogs That Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home, which is my book about the unexplained powers of animals. Um, he created um, a robot that moved according to a random event generator. Basically, if the mind is going to act on a machine, it's going to work much more easily if there's something random that it can influence rather than a fully determinate system. Much harder to see how that could happen. So you had a machine that um, was, the way it moved depended on a random element. And if this random element fired in one way, it would make the machine turn in one direction as opposed to a different direction. He then got day-old chicks. And as you probably know, day-old chicks or, and day-old ducklings imprint on the first moving object they see, they follow it. Uh, so he imprinted them on this robot, um, and the day-old chicks followed it around. Um, then he put them in a cage uh, at the side of an area where the robot was, and they couldn't follow it because they were in a cage. They couldn't get, but they desperately wanted to be near it. They thought it was their mother. Um, and what happened then is that the robot spent much more time near the day-old chicks. They, it came and spent most of its time near the day-old chicks. Um, if you took the day-old chicks away, it moved at random in the control condition. So here was an example of their deep intention, their instinctive need to be near this robot on which they'd imprinted, influencing random events within it. So I myself think that if we're going to have uh, human-machine interfaces they'd probably uh, have to work through uh, in training or biasing the direction of random events, which is the main way in which um, the mind could interact. There have been a lot of studies on the effects of human intention on random event generators um, at Princeton and elsewhere that suggest uh, rather weak effects. Um, so who knows? I mean, this is an, an, not an area that most people, are, there's very little research done in this area. I mean, the whole of parapsychology is an enormously neglected field. There's probably about 12 full-time parapsychologists in the whole world uh, because it's so taboo within academic science um, that it's very few people 
do it as a career because it's actually a bad career move. You're not going to get on in the world if you do research in parapsychology.